Good, whatever, and welcome to 4.2, the unit circle. In this video, we're actually going to be looking at the unit circle, which is just going in depth with more trigonometry and awesome, fun stuff with triangles. This whole thing right here is the unit circle with degrees, radians, all of the points labeled. You can memorize this if you want to. Today in this video, though, I'm going to be teaching you mainly how to derive it yourself. So how to look at, say, cosine of 2 pi over 3, which is right here, and just you're going to be able to tell me that it's negative 1 half. Okay. With a circle, our base equation is x squared plus y squared equals 1. So my radius is 1. My center is 0. So here is a circle, your unit circle, centered at 0, 0. And the radius, the length of every radii to the any point on the circle is 1. So I have from the center to this point over here is 1. Straight up is 1. Straight across is negative 1 because you're on your negative x-axis. Straight down is also negative 1 on your y-axis. Okay. I will also tell you that these happen. x is cosine, y is sine. Basically this is true because if I were to draw a triangle using any one of those points, then you have your x-axis, your y-axis, and this angle inside is your theta or your angle. In order to find what the x is, well, we know this length of the triangle is 1, that length right there, because that's the radius. So in order to find that, I can use my SOHCAHTOA. <laughs> sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So I can say cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's x over 1, so x is actually just cosine theta. Likewise, y is sine theta. Tangent relates to sine and cosine by using tangent theta is sine theta divided by cosine of theta. Notice this is also y over x. Same thing when you have your coordinate pairs. Okay, so likewise, I said you can memorize this if you want to. It's not too bad to memorize, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you guys a few tools using special right triangles and labeling quadrants and things in order to get this every single time correctly from any angle. Here's the first set of tools that I'm going to need you guys to basically memorize if you don't have them memorized already. These are special right triangles that you saw in geometry where you have your 45, 45, 90. This is also 45 degrees is pi over 4, so these are the same angle. Your ratio is 1, 1, square root 2. You also have your 30, 60, 90 triangle. Pi over 6 is 30 degrees. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees. Cross from your 30 is 1. Cross from your pi over 3 is square root 3. And the longest side, our hypotenuse, is 2. If you don't remember the SOHCAHTOA thing that I was just talking about in the previous slide, SOHCAHTOA. Dip your toe in water, soak it in water, SOHCAHTOA. So, Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's talking about the sides of the triangle. Whatever you angle you pick, say we had 30. If I pick the opposite side from 30, that's the one not touching it, so it would be 1. The hypotenuse is always the longest side. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent just means right next to. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So looking at some examples, if we have cosine of pi over 4, what that tells me to do is go to this angle, the pi over 4 angle, which is either one of these, and do cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I can say from pi over 4, my adjacent is 1, my hypotenuse is square root 2. So this is equal to 1 over square root 2. I don't really like square roots on bottom, so what we can do is multiply by square root 2 on both top and bottom, so that we would have square root 2 over 2. And that would be how you would leave your answer. OK, looking at our next example sine of pi over 3. This says go to pi over 3 and then do sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So from pi over 3, the opposite side is square root 3 over 2. So square root 3 over 2. And there would be my answer. There's no simplifying to do there. Good to go. The next tool we're going to need to know is how to correctly label our quadrants. So if you notice on the unit circle, some of those points had negatives in them. So this is where the negatives are coming from. If we have xy coordinate pairs, don't forget this is cosine sine. In the first quadrant, they're both positive. So then sine's positive and cosine's positive. You get tangent by doing sine over cosine. Then a positive divided by a positive will also be a positive. 
in the second quadrant, only your y is positive, so only your sine is positive. Both of them will be negative. Likewise, in the third quadrant, they're both negative, so when you divide negatives and negatives, tangent will be a positive. In your fourth quadrant, only cosine is positive. Basically, the way that I remember this is all of them are positive, only sine is positive, only tangent is positive, and then only cosine is positive. So at the top of my papers when I was in high school, what I used to write is this all students take calculus thing. That's just how I remember it. ASTC, that's how Ms. Sutter taught me when I took her for pre-cal way back when. So this is how I've always remembered it to this day. You're going to use this to determine whether you have a positive or negative angle. So in doing that, looking at an example, if say I have cosine of 3 pi over 4. Our first step is going to be determine which quadrant we are in. Okay, so if I want to know what quadrant I'm in, 3 pi over 4 is a little bit less than 1. It's 1 fourth less than 1, so I'm in the second quadrant. And in the second quadrant, only sine is positive, so that means that cosine must be negative. Now, this 3 pi over 4, we don't really have an angle like that in our triangles, but I'm going to look at my triangles. Uh, triangle. Because I have this triangle where I have pi over 4 as an angle, well that actually relates because these are both over 4. So then my ratio, 1, 1, square root 2, I do cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so the adjacent side to my pi over 4 angle is 1. The hypotenuse is 2, so I have negative 1 over square root 2, which again you'll have to rationalize to be negative square root 2 over 2. And if you look on your unit circle at 3 pi over 4, cosine, or your x value, will be negative square root 2 over 2. And I think your y value is going to be square root 2 over 2, but for this instance, this is all I need to see. Okay, so really the big thing that I want you to take away from this is how to find what is negative and what is positive using your quadrants and the all students take calculus or all sombreros try cantaloupe or something or however you want to remember it. Doesn't matter to me. So now everything that you see on this page is basically my cheat sheet for trigonometry. This is what I use. This is what I used to write at the top of every quiz, every test, anything like that that I did that was trigonometry or unit circle based. This stuff is really helpful. You're going to use Sokotoa a lot from now on. You may use these special right triangles a lot from now on. And of course, we're going to use our all students take calculus. And these points are the pi over twos and pi's and all the weird ones. So say, for example, if you guys were given sine of 5 pi over 6. I have Sokotoa to tell me that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. My first step is going to be determine which quadrant it is, so I know that my angle is positive or negative. So 5 pi over 6 is a little bit less than 1, so we're going to be right here in the second quadrant. So if I'm in the second quadrant, sine is positive, so whatever I get is going to be positive. Now, since there's a 6 on bottom, I have a pi over 6, I'm going to use the pi over 6 as my reference angle, what the angle that I'm going to look at. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so opposite side is 1, hypotenuse is 2, so I have 1 half. That would be it. doesn't need to simplify any further, so that's good to go. Uh, what about tangent of, say, 5 pi over 3? Again, I'm going to look at my Sogotoa. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. I have 5 pi over 3, which is a little bit less than 2. It's right down here somewhere. So that's going to be where C is positive, so where cosine is positive. So that means that my tangent angle is going to be negative, whatever it is. Now I have a 3 on bottom, so I'm going to look at the angle with the 3 on bottom. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so square root 3 over 1, which is just square root 3. And that would be your answer. Looking at another one now. If I have, oh, let's say cosine of negative 3 pi over 4. Don't forget the negative angles are going to go the other direction. So I'm going to actually start from 0, and I'm going to go the other direction. And here is negative 3 pi over 4, because this is negative pi over 2 straight up and down. That's negative pi. This is negative 3 quarters. So I'm in where tangent's positive. So my cosine is going to be a negative whatever it is then. 
Now I'm going to look at my pi over 4 angle with my triangles adjacent over hypotenuse, so 1 over square root 2, which will reduce to negative square root 2 over 2. And there's my answer, it's simple as it gets. I'm going to look at one more example. Uh, tangent of pi over 2. Huh. Well, pi over 2 is straight up. It's not in either of our triangles. I mean, it's kind of right here and right there, but it's not really an angle that we can use Sokotoa with. It has to be one of these angles. So if pi over 2 is right here, I know that tangent is y over x, and if I'm at pi over 2, then I have 1 over 0. So if this is 1 over 0, I cannot define by 0. So this is undefined, not undefined, undefined. So you cannot divide by 0, so you would actually have undefined. If you had like cosine of pi over 2, then it would just be 0. If you had sine of pi over 2, then it would just be equal to 1. Okay, there are also three more trig functions that you guys did not know about before. They relate to each other. So go ahead and take a minute, pause the video, write these down first. You already know cosine, sine, and tangent. Now with these, we have secant, cosecant, and cotangent. The way that I remember that these things go together is C's go with S's. Obviously, you already know cosine and sine. Those aren't going to go together. But cosine and secant, C with S, those kind of go together because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse where secant is that flipped, so hypotenuse over adjacent. Same thing with sine and cosecant, opposite over hypotenuse, so hypotenuse over opposite, and tangent and cotangent. All you do is flip whatever fraction or number and make it into a fraction. One type of problem that you'll see, will, it will give you a point on the circle. We have negative 8, 15, and 7 over 15, and it says cosine, or it wants you to find all six trig functions. Well really, we're already given cosine and sine. Don't forget cosine is your x, sine is your y. So we have cosine, which is negative 8 over 15, which means we also have secant, because for secant you just flip whatever you have for cosine, so negative 15 over 8. And sine is the y part, so we have 7 over 15, and 15 over 7 for cosecant, since you just flip it. Now tangent's the only one that's a little bit tricky, because tangent we know as sine over cosine. Well, sine is 7 over 15, and cosine is negative 8 over 15. Then I can multiply these both by the reciprocal on bottom, by 15 over 8. You can make it negative so that 15 divided by 15 is 1, 8 divided by 8. Oh no, not banana nose again. I don't want to talk to you, banana nose. And then multiply by the same thing on top. So that 15 divided by 15 is 1. We're left with negative 7 over 8. And just flip that for cotangent. And there we go. Next thing I'm going to look at is some more identities for you guys. These are not too terribly important, but they are good to know and they will be helpful later on. Uh, go ahead and copy down which ones are even and odd. The way that I remember this is cosine and it's one related to it is the only one that's even. So when we have cosine of negative angle, it's the same thing as cosine of the regular angle. However, on the odd ones, we have sine of the negative angle is equal to negative sine of that angle, whatever angle that may be. So odd, you pull out the negative, even, it's just the positive. And now looking at these examples, sine of t equals what? Well, we're given sine of negative t equals 3 eighths, and really sine of negative t, this is negative sine of t, because so I can pull out the negative. And to get this to be a positive, I would have to multiply this by a negative. So if I multiply my negative sine t by a negative, that will give me a positive sine t. So what I do to this side, I have to do to this number. So when I multiply this by a negative, it becomes negative 3 eighths. To get cosecant, just flip your sign, so you'll have negative 8 over 3. There's that one. And your other example, cosine of t equals negative 3 fourths, and it wants you to find cosine of negative t. Well, by our even properties, cosine of the negative angle is equal to cosine of that angle, whatever it may be, and that is equal to negative 3 fourths, so then we have cosine of negative t, which is equal to, oops, that should be a t, 
equal to cosine of t, which is negative 3 fourths. For a secant, just flip it, so we have negative 4 thirds. There's your even and odd properties. Okay, the next thing I'm going to talk to you about is reference angle. This is going to help us when we're trying to solve, say, cosine of 300 degrees. Because really, we've been looking at radians, but I don't really know how to mess with degrees because there's no 300 degree triangle. So reference angle is basically the angle that the terminal side makes with the x-axis, no matter where it is. So say if our angle is in the first quadrant, then our angle, our reference angle, is the, di is the angle to the x-axis. Second quadrant, same thing, but you're going to 180 degrees rather than zero degrees like you were in your first quadrant. Third quadrant, same thing, so you're going from 180 to whatever this angle may be, and it's just the difference between the two. The fourth quadrant, you're going to be going from whatever angle's in there to 360 degrees because that's almost a full rotation, so the closest x-axis is 360 degrees. So say we want to find the reference angle of, oh, let's do 295 degrees, the reference angle of that. Well, first thing to know is that it is in the fourth quadrant because it's between 270 and 360 degrees. And then the reference angle is going to be the difference right there. Well, if this is 295 degrees, then the difference between 295 and 360 is going to be 65 degrees. Well, there it is right there. That's your reference angle. That's what you could look at in your triangles. We, I know there's no 65 degree angle in our triangles, but say we want to do this one, cosine of 300 degrees. First step, just like in the other one, was to determine which quadrant we are in. With 300 degrees, that is between the 270 and the 360, just like our example over here was, and it's going to be right there. Since it's cosine, it's going to be positive, so whatever answer I get will be positive, so that's cool. Now I'm going to use my reference angle. The reference angle here will be 60 degrees because it's 300 is 300 or is 60 degrees away from 360. So then in your triangles, you are going to look at the angle with 60 degrees. That tells us which angle to reference in our triangles. That's why we call it the reference angle. So 1 square root 3, 2 is our ratio. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 1 over 2. So I'll have positive 1 half as my answer. And there we are, good to go. Hopefully this video has been helpful for your 4-2 notes, and I look forward to any questions that you may have. Have a wonderful rest of your evening and day.